This is Babber from Babber's Big Ideas, and today we're going to learn how to build this hoop house out of repurposed wood. This is the most levelish ground. Um, it's not 100% level, but because the structure is not likely to be permanent, I'm not too worried about leveling the ground. Okay. Okay, so once you've um, measured out your 2x4, and we're using uh, reclaimed wood from a fence I took down, and we measured out 10 feet long and 8 feet wide pieces, uh, we screwed them together, and then we checked to make sure that um, everything looked relatively square. It looks like it's crooked right now, but gotten it parallel with the house. We discovered if we do a double angle on this pipe, it goes in much nicer. If you only angle one side, it keeps moving to one side. If you don't put an angle, it's way harder to get it in. So this makes it easier. So let's show you. Now we're just checking to make sure that this length is good. Okay. All right, so we got it finally angled in right. On to the next one. The other pipes have to go at the two foot markers here. So that's an additional four each side. And we have all of them right here with their nice little angle cuts. So we'll pop them in. Door. Yeah. And a frame. Yeah. Have their own little fastener. Okay, so the one end here is straight. The opposite end has a little fatness there. See that? Oops, sorry. Okay, so that they can go inside. There we go. And then that's it. So after we had the hoops put together, it didn't take long for us to put them in place. Just one after the other. And then we were finished. And now we can see what kind of shape it's all gonna look like. There is the skeleton of the hoop house on point with the house. This is the first part. Next we'll show you how to build the frame and then the door. A frame was built for stability that went around with four walls like this and then down. Then we built the frame for the door that went up and around like this and a similar one also for the back wall with a hole in it for the window frame. Angle brackets to hold in place. Okay so what we're eyeballing here is to go through here, through here, through here, to the wood. <laughs> On the wrong way. Okay, you're good. So let's see. So what we've done here is we've framed out our door. It's not in its final form yet. It gives us an idea of where it's gonna go. And I think what we're gonna do is get two by twos, kind of add them into the frame. We'll give it extra stability. Now, one problem we ran into is because the ground isn't level, the structure itself isn't quite level. Um, if that's something that bothers you, you'd have to pre-level the ground first, probably by digging into it. Now we're working on framing the back wall. We wanted to frame out a window in case it's really hot in the summer and needed airflow. Now, these two by fours here 
are actually measuring the same length. But the leveling issue is hooping us literally and figuratively. We decided to continue on. We didn't want to stop this project. So we figured that if we kept going, perhaps it would just work itself out. Our focus was actually to try and get more stability at this point. Okay, hoop house looks like hell right now. Uh, I apologize also for the sound of all the traffic. Anyway, we realized that because it wasn't level, it needed to get level. It was buggering us up every way. So this was our attempt to getting more level. I'll show you where we got so far. All right, I had to take out all of the attachments for the piping on this side because my daughter had dug out the trench to get it to sink in, but it only did a little bit. So this side should be okay. So now that we've got things somewhat level here, I'll show you that from corner to corner. It's not perfect, but it's pretty darn close. Of course, now I have to put everything back together again. So pound it in the posts, put in the hoops, had to check and make sure that all the holes were still in line. Once that was done, I put the carriage bolts back in. I had to give them a bit of a spray with uh, a silicone spray just so that I could get the nut to thread back in with all the dirt that was in it. That really did help. Once that was done, I had to go back and re-level out the frame. So adjusting the frame, securing it in, and then I had added some of these angle brackets from one side to the other, and I also did the back wall just to give more stability. On the back, we've got the side angles, and then the other angles. That really helped the stability of the frame. Then we could move forward and add a header to the door frame. Curved it out. Saw blade. Pre drill the holes. And then I worked out a slot for a two by four so that it could be attached to the top of the hoop house. This would secure the top of the hoops and have strength to the frame. I needed something that would be strong for hanging baskets and lights in the future. As you can see, we had started to use some clean wood that we had to get from the lumber store as we ran out of the reclaimed wood. Once all that was secure, we added the two by four full length of the hoop house. I needed to be able to also attach the hoops onto this frame in a way where there would be flexible. I found these three quarter inch pipe brackets that you can buy at any hardware store and attached them on that way. And that worked out amazingly well, which was great. And now we're looking at working on the door. For the door, we use two by twos for the outer part of the frame like this, and then a two by four for the middle for stability. Now we had to use a nice dry level ground. So in the garage we went, we drilled some pilot holes first to make sure that we didn't split the wood and made the screws go in much easier. Our door frame measured half an inch smaller than the actual door frame of the greenhouse. Then that way there was enough clearance to keep it cozy enough that it would fit nicely, but not so big that it was going to hinder any opening or closing. Now we installed it onto the greenhouse. This took some fiddling, but we wanted to make sure that we were happy with the way it opened and it closed. 
Once the plastic was on the door frame itself, we added some plywood on the corners like this. This was just a quarter inch plywood. Then the Gorilla Tape was used to line all the hoops and brackets that the plastic would touch so it would limit its breaking down. So for the framing of the end wall, I have decided to use two by twos and cut them along the angle of the hoop. And we will use this to attach the plastic. Okay, so we've now framed out the end wall where I will attach a separate panel of plastic. And the hope is that this larger piece will be big enough to wrap around the front which will allow me to attach it without using extra wood pieces so we will see how that goes so I used um, binder clips to hold the plastic nice and tight and for this end wall, um, I'm just simply stapling it to the frame that we added. So, and then as I add staples, I'm removing the binder clips. So, this is my process of attaching the batten, which is the one by twos that are securing the plastic. So I started with this long side here and I'm using these binder clips to keep things in place while I permanently attach them since it's just me. If you had two people it would be easier to have them hold onto the plastic. And then I'm just working on this end wall right now. There we go. Basically, with each piece, you just want to pull as tightly as you can and then attach one end and then the other. So once I'm done this end wall, I'm going to be doing the other end wall and then finally I'll finish with, with this side here. And here are some photos of the finished product. I hope this has given you some insights. Good luck on your own project. Thanks for watching.